I tip my hat. I mean, they 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 played like a national championship team tonight, and um, I give our guys a lot of credit to be be able to come out of the locker room uh, after finding ourselves in the deficit that we were and not hanging our heads and being able to get back in the game. And then, as I told the team in the locker room, um, when you play an elite level team, the margin for error um, is razor thin. And when you make a couple mistakes that you might be able to get away with uh, versus some teams, um, that's not the case with Villanova. A five point deficit becomes an 11 point deficit. And so you're playing uphill again. So, uh, you know, I think when you look at the first half, I don't know what we could have done much better. I think our worst defensive effort was at the end of the half when we gave up a wide open three in front of our bench with five seconds left in the half, and it was a miss. I think if you press pause on your DVRs, um, I'd say about out of the 11 they made in the first half, eight of them were highly contested. So you tip your hat, and uh, you curse under your breath, and you try to change it at halftime. And then we came back in the second half, and like I said, give Villanova credit, you know, a couple of our errant plays, turnover, um, missed free throw, another turnover goes from five to ten very quickly. And so um, we got to move on. Chris, I think a lot of people this season are looking for a dominant team. They don't think there is one. Is, is that wrong? Is Villanova that team? They were tonight. You know, it was a dominant performance, uh, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, I'm not on the uh, Villanova bus. Um, and so I, I don't know why they didn't necessarily play as well at Villanova or St. John's. And, again, I think um, they're at, at Providence or Providence at home uh, at Villanova or at Providence. Um, I, you know, I'm not in their locker room. I know they're going through some injuries, but um, I just judge what I saw today, and they were pretty daggone good. Coach, you talk about how they were just kind of, like you said, eight shots contested. You could even feel in Centos, it seemed like everybody just kind of threw their hands up at some points. How do you coach that in the locker room? What do you, what do, you do when some – Well, I told our guys, it, to me, it was pretty simple. I thought, um, thought we were playing hard. I didn't think the lead was insurmountable. When we were down 27 points at half, we are down 14. Uh, that's two possessions, and then and you're in a single-digit game. And I thought our guys came out with the right type of mindset and cut the lead to three. Um, a couple plays I wasn't really happy with. This sort of changed the momentum of the game. Uh, but uh, you got to make your own breaks when you're trying to beat a team that's won as many league championships and has been as big moments as they have, you have to make your own breaks. And so as, as much as I want to lament and you know, be ticked off at a couple of the referees' decisions, I got to own the fact that we have to be better in those moments and understand that, again, when you're playing an elite level team, the margin for error when you make a couple plays is very thin. And, uh, and I think our guys learned that today. But I'm not down on our guys. I don't think we played as well. I thought our interior wasn't very good today. Our big guys weren't very good. Um, but they've been a huge part of our team, and they've been uh, one of the reasons we've uh, had the season that we've had is because of their play. And they've got to be able to play better on Wednesday, and I think they will. The first time you played Georgetown this year at home when it was a highly competitive game, winning in overtime, what did you take away from that game? What are you going to use at this when you play against them upcoming? Well, I, what I take away is I, they've got two all-conference type players. I mean, Marcus Derrickson is playing at an extremely high level. And not only did he do it against us, but he's done it every, every game since. Uh, Jesse Govan is a, is a tough matchup. He's a very effective center. Um, but honestly, I, I haven't dedicated one second to thinking about Georgetown until you answer, asked me that question. So I, I don't know what I take away other than we have to get ready for him. Chris, do you think uh, your guys maybe got sped up in the first six, seven, eight minutes? Just seemed like there were some rushed, shot, rushed shots, excuse me, and maybe some delicately placed ones in the paint. How would you evaluate the yeah, flow of the uh, offense? There? Yeah, I mean, I felt that. It would be easier to watch on film, but... Um, you know, coach has got to make that adjustment on the fly and be able to, to uh, spread the right message to their team during the course of the, uh, the game. But I felt that. I felt like we were a little rushed. Uh, I thought we had a couple uh, wide open threes that we missed. Uh, I thought we pressed a little bit. And then the cumulative effect of um, 
their ability to hit some contested threes probably promoted that on our on our end. Um, so we came together at halftime, and I thought we corrected it. But again, uh, it's really hard to get in a hole like that against uh, Jay's team. Chris, is it hard right now to to find the right uh, lineups to put on the floor when you're trying to balance that act between like maybe playing Kaiser more minutes for defense while also trying to get your best offensive lineup out on the court? That's just. Uh, I guess that's the um, difference between football and basketball. So, yeah, but we've done it fairly well through 28 games. They're just a tough matchup. They really are. Chris, kind of lost in the middle of all this was Trayvon becoming Xavier's second all-time leading scorer, passing David West. Was there, um, you know, what did you think of that? He made two free throws to, to pass um, David. You know, was that something you guys even talked about after the game? Is there just so much going on today that it wasn't a focus? He needed to score 43 points, and then we would have won. <laughs> no, he uh, it wasn't a focus for him. Um, I mean, I knew he was getting closer. Uh, I knew it was inevitable. He's an awesome person. Uh, he's, he's been a staple of our program. And, and uh, I'm disappointed for him because this is his senior year. Uh, I had my senior year a long time ago. This will be his team, just like it's JP and Sean and Karam's team. Um, but we, we've got a lot of season to play. We've got some good moments um, to come. Uh, today wasn't one of them. And hopefully, it's one that we learn from. But uh, I mean, I've said all, all the things that uh, I can say about Trey and more. I mean, he's been. It's been fun to coach, and I have no doubt on Monday when he shows up for practice, he'll be ready to go again. We had a chance to talk to Najee, but not the seniors. What was kind of the, the temperature in the locker room of, of them after? Obviously disappointed, but are they hanging their heads, or are they already kind of like, we got to just, you know, it's one bump in the road kind of thing? Sure. I mean, they were hanging their heads. I mean, they, they're competitive, but um, it's, it's not going to be, uh, they, they won't be hanging on Monday. Kids are a lot more resilient than adults sometimes. And... Um, you know, I think the coaches sometimes take it harder, but those guys will be ready to go. Uh, they're disappointed, but we also we also know we're still playing for some things, and uh, I think we're well aware of that. And we just have to be able to turn the page and learn from some of the mistakes we made today. Chris, if you play them again, either in the conference tournament or beyond, what what do you change? What what can you control? Um, it's a good question. I'll worry about that when we get to the finals. Chris, you've obviously, you know, been one of the best teams in the country. Played some of the best teams in the country. When Nova plays at that level, can any team in America reach them? Play to that level with them? Well, I haven't seen every team up close and personal, but I think it would. Um, I, mean, I think it's very evident. Two years ago, they won the national championship, albeit different, you know, uh, players, and, and some of these guys were, were on that team. But um, you know, the thing that. I think Jay has is, is, is a great culture. They improve as the year goes on. They play really well together. If they shoot the ball uh, the way they did today, it will take a monumental effort to beat them. And the other team's going to have to do the same exact thing. And um, you know, they uh, they shoot the three and they rely on the three uh, maybe more than any team in the country. And uh, you know, it doesn't always work out for you when you start missing them. And I think as evidenced by how they played at Providence. But um, when it's going in, it's they're they're a tough they're a tough team to knock off. They really are. Chris, I saw you pull Trey and JP aside for maybe a little bit longer than you might have ordinarily as they were coming off the court at the end of the game. Your message to them was it anything of note in that moment? No, it was uh, between coach and player, and I'm gonna keep it that way. Appreciate you asking.